So in this video, we're going to talk about the trailing stop indicator, the Deutsche Channel. This is Michael Thompson, advisor and analyst at JP Markets. Before we do so, we just need to cover the general advice. Anything we covered today is for educational and general advice purposes. Now, the Deutsche Channel is developed by a gentleman called Richard Donchian. He is known as the father of trend following or momentum trading. It was an indicator he was developed by himself for his own trading and also to manage his own as his fund. What the Deutsche Channel does is identifies the highest high and the lowest low in the last end period or number of bars. The indicator uses to determine support or resistance of a security or any instrument for that matter. So a long trade is taken normally when prices touch or cross above the highest high. Now in terms of trailing stop, that would be to exit. Now on the short side, a short trade is taken when prices touch or cross below the lowest low. In this case, we're exiting a long position. I'll demonstrate that when we look at the charts. So typically it's used to buy security or exit depending on if you're what side of the market you're on. Here's an example of the Deutsche Channel. Now by default it's set on 20 bars. Okay so if you're looking at a daily chart it'll be 20 days look back. Now you can see the upper line which is the blue line that's the upper channel that's indicating the highest high price of the last 20 days now if it's on a weekly time frame then it'll be 20 20 weeks then the lower channel identifies the lowest price in the last 20 days the lowest of the low price so you can see if you follow those lines it's like a constantly moving support and resistance level used to identify for an entry or used to identify as mentioned as a as an exit as a trailing stop. We'll take a look at it from a trailing stop perspective. Let's go into the chart to look at how this can be used. So here I have a chart open up. It's based on it's on the chart of whole group, based on the momentum scan that we send out every week. So just identifying a stocks that have been rising higher over time. Now if you were to actually apply a trailing stop which is the Dolchin channel let me explain how you can use it. So if we go to the indicators and we'll go bring up the Deutsche channel. By default, it's going to give you three lines. The top band, the mid, mid range or the mid price band, and then you've got the lower band. Now let's go in and adjust and get rid of a few things. So we're going to be focusing on buying buying stocks. If you were shorting and you wanted to apply, it would be the opposite. So let's just focus on that side of the market where most people hold stocks. So I'm just going to get rid of the bias, which is the middle. We'll get rid of the upper as well. And we'll get rid of the background just to make it easy to identify this. And we'll make the thickness a bit on the line a bit thicker. So here, there you have it. You have the 20 period of the Deutsche channel and that is the moving support level which is our trailing. Before I demonstrate how to use this as the trailing and why you should consider using it is first of all you'll notice that we're using weekly. Now if you apply it to a daily you're going to find there's a lot more noise. That's something I stress in and uh, to the clients and to anyone who's looking to analyze market, particularly stocks, is that you want to be looking at larger time frames if you want to capture some good trends. So here's this on a daily. You can find you'll find that daily price actions will fluctuate and cause what I will call more noise. If you're if you're trying to capture large trends, daily time frames can be a lot more noisier. So we if we apply the same indicator as you can see here, the 20 period. Deutsche channel, lower channel, you'll see that there's likelihoods that we can get out much sooner. So there's two ways to adjust the, the setting to change the indicator to make it wider, so to speak. 
One, we can change the time frame. So same 20 period on a daily. Now I'll just mark an area. You can see what I mean by that. So you can see that that area I've just marked there. I'm just going to highlight the color. And then when I switch it to the monthly, you'll see the difference in the, the price. As you can see, the time, the same time period that I've marked there, with a 20 period weekly, you find that the bars are a lot more consolidated. There's less up and down movement, which is the, the noise being removed. And as you can see on the weekly, our trailing stop is moved much, much further away. So 20 weeks represents almost uh, close to five months of time. So this gives you indication of how far we're, we're having the trailing stop. The alternative is if you want to go even longer in time frame, if you're, let's say, a much longer term investor or hold, want to hold a position much longer, you could go to a monthly. And then you can see the bar that that time frame that we highlighted is only one month of price. And this will keep you in the position for a very, very long time, even using the same setting. But let's stick to the weekly. That's generally I find is the most overall suitable for most traders and investors to, to be holding. And then the alternative, we can also change the indicator value from 20 to even 52, which represents one year price. So we're trailing one year of the lowest price. But let's let's keep it on the, the 20 for the time being. And I just want to illustrate the uses of this indicator itself for trailing. As you can see, now it's trying to determine the lowest price of the last 20 bars, the, 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 the lowest low of the last 20 bars. So to illustrate this, let's zoom in a little bit closer. And I'm just going to put a horizontal line to highlight where this was picked up so you understand the indicator itself. Okay, so if you count back 20 bars, so this indicator is looking back 20 bars. So we count back, one, two, three, this goes back to uh, all the way to this low. So how can I tell? It's because the value is there and then the low corresponds to this bar here. So that's 20 weeks and that's where the low was, was reached. So we go back further and look at, let's say, this point in time. So the purpose of a trailing stop is to actually lock in prices, minimize risk. There's really two purposes. One is to move up our trailing to lock in profits. The other one is to reduce the risk once we've entered the position. So this would only update once the new lowest low price is higher than the previous. That's why you find periods where it goes flat, the indicator, is when we haven't achieved that yet. So when you have a pullback in the market and it consolidates a little bit, the indicator will generally go flat, which means that prices haven't reached the new high, new lower high, so the indicator hasn't risen. So if you go back to this corresponding point here, you'll see that that's, that's the low, lowest point on this bar. So on the 23rd of April, that's when the lowest price of the last 20 bars was this low here on the 7th of January. And we started to get further uh, up higher once we reached on this bar the 27th of May that we achieved the higher price up here. So each time it achieved a new high low, it will keep moving indicator up. Now let's talk about how, so that's the general concept. We want to be moving our stops higher as prices rises but when prices consolidate we tend we'll keep it flat or same level so that means it's ratcheting up slowly over time and locks in profits so automatically you have a, an exit point it removes doubt removes confusion and removes most importantly indecision when it comes to taking a profit or getting out of the market when the market's about to turn over 
or particularly the stocks. So let's have a look at the two uses or the two common way of using this. One is known as the intraday exit where if it touches this, this line, the lower band, touches that red line, we're out. So it means it's set in the market. It requires a little bit more work where you have to update it as prices adjust, but in this case, it's only once a week. Um, so that, that means that each time we, we have a, a rise in our trailing stop, you have to adjust it accordingly. The advantage of that is you don't give as much profits away. The disadvantage, however, if you have a spike where prices come down sharply, and at the end of the week, we close higher. So in some cases, you could still be in a position. However, since you're in the, in the market, you get knocked out and then you have to find a new entry point to the same stock. So the other alternative and also low maintenance in terms of week to week is when you wait for the close. So in the case of if you wait for the close, such as here, Let's just draw this. So if you wait for the close like here, it's going to change the color so it's a little bit easier to see. Let's make that yellow. Okay, so you can see here, this bar here, that well, I'll zoom a little bit closer so it's easy to see it. So this is the previous value, which is at 5.19. So on the next, the following week, we had to have prices close below, which in this case occurred at 5.17. We would exit the next day, which is on the open of the 31st of July. So this is all Friday's dating. Now, if you were to use at the end of the close, and assuming, let's let's say we bought it, to give an example. You happen to buy it on that day, and or that week there, and every, each day you simply monitor it. You don't have to adjust it because we're waiting for the close. So very low maintenance in terms of managing the, the order. You simply have to look at the chart once a week and to see if it's closed below and if it has you simply exit the next day so you're not placing the order in the market however the downside is that if the market does come down rapidly and you get a very big candle so in cases like like if you had a big candle such as that there and you're waiting for the close you would also give back a lot more so there's always advantages and disadvantages in, in using either, either technique but if you, if you were looking for a low maintenance way to manage a trailing stop and you had a portfolio, rather than manually, manually adjusting them each week, which requires a bit more work, you could simply wait for it to close below and then execute uh, your order for the exit on the, on the, on the open on Monday. So that's how you use it. Uh, I'm going to show you lastly uh, um, in terms of a, a wider time frame, I mean a, a lengthier time frame in terms of setting you can see here it's 20 20 bars but let's say if you go to a 52 week 52 is just a random number but in terms of it gives us a yearly worth of price so I'm just trying to illustrate the difference between using a larger setting input so let me just get rid of Okay, so if you have a look here, if you happen to buy it at around about July or so, you may not get the bottom. So let's say you are to pick this up, CHC, Charter Hall Group, at around about 40, 50 cents, and you applied the 52 week, you would have been in this stock all the way through for almost going on nine years there. So you can see the difference that if you were to buy it in 2009, the, let's say you happen to, to pick it up, whether you're using momentum or whatever methodology you use, and you apply the 52 week uh, Dolce channel, you would be in this all the way through, not have to do anything other than monitor it once a week. 
So hopefully this has been insightful and you found use to it. Do have an experiment and play around with this indicator. It's very powerful. It's used by a lot of the hedge fund even to this day. They trade commodities and futures. Systems are great. A lot of great trend following systems that developed by using this indicator. There's many ways to do it, but this is probably the simplest way and you'll find on many charting packages available. So that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.